now you've got this you've got a bit of a promotion haven't you lately mate uh, I wouldn't say a promotion <laughs> I think I was in quite a prestigious enough job yeah okay. I was uh, yeah covered in my street live with my best mates yeah but uh, but no it's, it's it's a great change certainly and uh, it's a genuine pleasure and honor to have, have this new job certainly so can I ask a, a a member of parliament this question please can i just ask as a politician what's the what's the naughtiest thing you've ever done okay well Ka Carl, <laughs> for, for the benefit of uh, of the viewers carl actually pre-warned me he was going to ask this question <laughs> well but, i'm but not stitching anybody up you know. prior to us recording i had a chance to think about <laughs> have it you and let me, let me tell you about the naughtiest thing i've ever done Go on, then. so i was uh i was nine years old yeah oh okay and, and i mean uh i mean school yeah uh and for some stupid reason, the special needs teacher had decided she was going to make me uh, learn to knit. Yeah, but I oh, can't okay. use two hands right, and right, I've got okay. fine finger movements in my yeah. hand. I'm not even left handed, and that's the hand I can use, and okay. I'm not left handed. So she's making me do all this like knitting, and I can't bloody do it. And she's like there, like slagging me off and saying, try harder, screaming yeah. and shouting at me, oh, right. bringing me close to tears. Yeah. So I ran away from school, didn't I? Oh, okay. And so, uh, so I got as far as the park next door to the school, <laughs> right. and then I shot myself. I thought my mum's going to shout at me, so I ran, I ran back to school. <laughs> right, but thankfully, knitting class had done by then. Well, uh, it's a lot better than running through a wheat, uh, a field of wheat, mate. That one, I'll give you that one. Yeah, <laughs> the monster fields of barley or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in houses of parliament, does everybody rib? Anybody? Have you ever seen anybody ribbing her about that? Rib, what ribbing? Ribbing Theresa May about the, uh, that, that no. Quote. No, uh, <laughs> uh, not as of yet. Uh, but, uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm no, sure. Ultimately, I'd like to see a parliament where uh, people are respectful and they debate the issues yeah. and don't make personal insults yeah. or jibes. No, yeah, good on you, good on you, mate. So, so now you've taken over the Hallam. Con I can't say this word. Constituent. Con what's the word? Constituency. Constituency. Yeah. yeah, I've always had an issue with that word. It's just, it's just not in my mind. So, since taking over from Nick Clegg, former uh, prime uh, deputy prime minister of the Great Britain. What's been the biggest challenge taking over his patch um, from, you know, as soon as you walk through the door after after becoming an MP? Chucked in a deep end, basically. Yeah. Uh, no, and on my own, uh, and without a uh, rubber ring or armbands or anything yeah. like that. And, uh, no staff, no office, uh, yeah. uh, no formal training programme. Uh, the Parliamentary Labour Party yeah. uh, 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 have been good in like, uh, run some training events, but it's not like anything like formal vocational training yeah. or anything. It's just been like other MPs passing advice on to, in, in a room to like the, uh, some of the new intakes yeah. in 2017. So the, the issues of the local area then, what have you found that when anybody walks into a new job, they always think, "Why? Why has this not happened? What, what's going on here? What's going on here?" So, like on, on a local level, Sheffield, Hallam level, what's been the biggest thing that you found? God, this has been, you know, this has not uh, been attended to like yeah, it should have been. Well, uh, like, like today, for example, like this time of day, I've been uh, dealing with uh, some uh, constituents who had some immigration problems, yeah. uh, domestic violence problems. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, as well as that, I've been dealing with some uh, issues with benefits and yeah. the job centre and, and stuff like that. Okay. And I think that's one of the uh, biggest problems that's not been attended in the constituency. One yeah. neg neglected to do when he was deputy yeah. minister is sort out. Uh, all the attacks on our welfare state yeah. and on our public services and he was complicit in uh, the, the demolition of these uh, uh, support networks and infrastructures yeah. that, that le the Labour Party created in terms of the welfare state and the benefit system and the NHS etc yeah. and he's made all this mess now where there's a lack of invest investment in public services there's a lack of investment in local governments or the council budgets have been yeah. slashed and then uh, people are having being chucked off benefits left, right, and centre, and being made to wait for too long to see the GP, being made to wait for too long to yeah. get an hospital appointment uh, or an operation, and yeah. it's an absolute mess. And he, he was the second most powerful person in the country for five years, yeah. and I'm having to like. Uh, that firefight with all these problems that still continue to this day because it's still unfortunately got a conservative government. Yeah, no, I hear you. Brilliant, good work. So it, you, you, you mentioned uh, the benefit system now. You know, you've you benefited from the benefit system yourself. Absolutely, um, absolutely. So uh, how has it treated you over the years as, you know, needing it, really? And, uh, well, it's, uh, I've, I've had uh, my, my little bit of help, I'm not saying that. 
like, like okay. t- tons of money from it. And he's no, not no, far from it. But it's, it's been like a little how we like uh, uh, taxi fares because they struggle on buses and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, 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 that. That's been a big help. And then I have a little bit of help with care because I, I struggle. Like I, I can't even change my own bed, cl- bed clothes yeah. or do, do me, wash my own clothes and uh, yeah. iron and stuff like that. So I get money to pay somebody to do that for me. Yeah. Uh, or towards it, I pay a bit more extra to what I'm getting in. Yeah. But that, that's, uh, so tiny little things like that. Yeah, exactly. That people yeah. look at benefits. Yeah, and... I know, I know. And it's real help. And these are like uh, things that. Uh, uh, like I said, particularly well, obviously now I'm uh, quite wealthy, and uh, yeah. I don't get as much money as I used to before when it was on less money. Yeah, and that's quite understandable. But uh, uh, but when there's so many disabled people out there that don't have the luxury of a of a generous salary, salary or yeah. I currently have, yeah, and it's it's a lifeline for them. It's the difference between them being independent, uh, yeah. uh, uh, or or being housebound and, and alone, and uh, yeah. And it's just so important that, like I said, we do use uh, a little bit uh, of this types of revenues to, uh, to help disabled people. 100%. But yeah. that money has been completely decimated for, for seven years now. And there's people uh, that are very, very severely disabled and very, very in need uh, that, uh, that are being shut off it. And, uh, and there's people uh, that, are, that are slogging the guts off trying to find a job. Yeah. And they're being sanctioned uh, uh, because there's a culture yeah. within the job centre to uh, to sanction people to uh, to get their figures uh, of, of claimants down. I've and, seen and it. I've seen try and say that's not happening, but I've yeah. spoken to people that have worked in the is. job centre. Yeah. I've spoken to to claimants who've been unfairly sanctioned, and there's countless stories in the alternative media yeah. that you don't see, like in the Rupert Murdoch papers, in the Sun or the Times or whatever, yeah. or on Sky News. And uh, like I said, there's so much. Uh, travesty, unfairness and downright evil going off where genuine needy people uh, who've got good hearts and good intentions are being penalised and victimised and suffering. I've seen uh, I've seen an example myself where a, a family member was physically unable to get to a job centre that week because the children weren't mm. very well um, and they took her money off her for a couple of weeks because she yeah. physically couldn't get childcare to yeah. attend this five minute chat. Yeah. To sign on and get her money and the, nothing, yeah. Those well, she, could, she could have done by uh, filling a form online or something like that. Yeah, yeah, no, you yeah. Know, know. Or just like a one-off, like a yeah. just understanding that. Yeah, know, shit happens. exactly. Yeah, in in this instance, we appreciate that uh, you can't get childcare, so don't yeah. worry about it. Come and see us next, next time. Next time, yeah. And we'll have a proper chat next time. Kids yeah. are in school, yeah. But uh, but they have no uh, no compassion, no leniency. Yeah. Uh, in these circumstances, and it, it's become psychopathic, sadistic, and evil, and that's the culture that yeah. uh, the Tories, the Liberal Democrats, and now uh, uh, today's amazing new Tory Prime Minister succeeding David Cameron. That's yeah. the culture that they want because they want that money yeah. to be transferred from disabled people and unemployed people into the pockets yeah. of the, their super rich friends yeah. in, ta- in the form of tax breaks or selling our public services to the friends uh, yeah. so they can make loads of profit on the share. So there's a lot of it's news and, and, and there's a lot of awareness raised around mental health at the minute as well, isn't there? Is, is mental health classed as a disability? Mental health absolutely is. It's a yeah. protected disability by definition under the definition of disability within yeah. the uh, Equality Act of 2010. And uh, rightfully so, but I think there's a lot more that needs to be done on mental health, mm. particularly at a day-to-day human being to human being level. Uh, so many people like uh, end up suffering in silence, and even yeah. in some circumstances committing suicide because yeah. they're too scared to talk about their emotions to yeah. their friends and their loved ones. And I, I think it shouldn't be like that. I think we need to start talking <coughs> about when, when we're feeling low and we're feeling depressed or suicidal. 100%. We, we need to talk to his friends and, and his family and loved ones about that. I, I, I wanted to just briefly mention that because I want it to be out there in the world more. Not that this video necessarily means anything to anybody, but you know, it's if, if, if one person sees somebody talking about it and it makes them feel more comfortable about talking to it, to their friends or whatever, then yeah, absolutely. just the general yeah. raising the awareness of it is just needs to grow and grow. And it, it, is, it feels like it's growing. Feels I, like it I, to, I, to I me, but that, that's just me. Know. I don't know. I still think there's a taboo and a stigma associated yeah. with it, and um, particularly when it comes to men as well. Like men think that, that like uh, it makes them less of a man, or, yeah. or or like makes them a pussy or a wimp or whatever yeah. to talk about the, the feelings and 
to, uh, like, and to talk about their emotions and to talk about relationships, like what girl or guy they might fancy, unrequited yeah. love and things like that. And no, it's not. It's like we all go through these things and we shouldn't repress them. Repression is one of the biggest dangers in society today. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, I mean, we shouldn't bottle things up. We, we should talk to people because there's always somebody that will listen. If it's not, uh, uh, like, if you can't find a friend or a loved one who's yeah. got a sympathetic ear, or you're cautious about that, then there's charities you can talk to and yeah. things like that. And uh, or you can go and uh, uh, if but, uh, if you can wait a few weeks for an appointment at least, because of what the Tories have done, you can go and see a GP <laughs> okay. and then get referred yeah. to counselling. And I did that a few years ago when I, I was uh, yeah. battling uh, depression. And it was a huge help talking to a counsellor. And uh, th there's absolutely no shame in it. It doesn't compromise compromise your masculinity as a man. No. It doesn't if you're a woman make you any less of a strong woman. Yeah. In fact, I think there's strength in talking. Yeah. Th uh, there's strength in being able to open up. And, and to be fearless in that way. So yeah. I'd encourage anybody to do it. And Brilliant. I want to get that message out there. Let's talk to each other more. Brilliant. Let's talk about what's bothering us, what's upsetting us, uh, uh, all the little things that we think are embarrassing that we want to get out there and open up about. Let's not, not hide Let's it. Let's get it out there, yeah, definitely. Yeah. 100%. So, so Jared, Jared O'Mara, friend of a lot of years. Really appreciate it. I'm proud of you. Uh, for what you're doing and the difference Thank you're making you. in the community, I, I genuinely am. Um, and you know, to see your victory speech, your emotional victory speech that you gave, I think everybody that has known you through the years just know how much this position means to you, and how much you means care well. about the local people. And Truly, yeah. and yeah, I just appreciate you joining me in this car today. Uh, thanks again, Jared Amara. Pleasure, man, Carl. Thank Cheers, you. Man. Thank you. Cheers, man.